Hi class, welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to talk about congruence in overlapping triangles. So, let's just read. We have a few bullet points here. Sometimes we're given two triangles that overlap with each other. When triangles overlap, it usually means that they share a side or an angle. So that's going to be important later. In order to more easily match up which sides and angles are corresponding, or to help us in our proof or when solving for a variable, we need to separate the two triangles. Super important. Separate the two triangles. We'll need to do this really carefully and be sure we relabel the triangles once they're separate. All right, so let's look here. Separate the two triangles and identify their common parts. So we have, well, we have a whole bunch of triangles here. And let's do, for this triangle, let's do triangle A, B, C, and triangle, let's do A, E, C. Because we have so many triangles, we really want to talk about um, which triangles we're looking at. All right, so if I separate these, A, B, C is going to be here. So separate them one at a time. Make sure to make any markings, like B is a right angle, so I want to make sure I write that B is a right angle. All right, and then I have A, E, C. So here, I'm going to draw A, E, C. All right. And again, I marked that right angle that belongs to E. Now, if we look at our two triangles, we have AC, segment AC in both of them. And if we look at our picture, oops, you know what? Let me do it in green so we can really see the difference. I'll use red and green to outline our two triangles. So here I have A, B, C triangle, and then I have A, E, C triangle. And if you notice, I went over the same segment A, C twice, which means A, C is our common shared overlapping part. So A, C is common. And we can use that if we're doing a proof or something later. And we'll see that actually in the next example here. All right, let's look at part B. So let's look at triangle ABE and triangle um, CBD. So let's look at those two triangles here. So we're going to unlap them. All right, so here is A, B, and E. All right, and there's no markings in there, so I don't really have anything to reference, but I'm going to keep it there. And then I have C, B, D. C, B, D. Now, again, I don't have any sides. If we look at those letters, I don't have any signs that overlap with each other. If I use my red and green, here's A, B, E. And then here is B, D, C. So now... This gets a little tricky because if you look, my red and green markers did overlap just a little bit, but it's not really the corresponding sides that overlapped. It's not a full overlapping. Um, let's say, for example, BE that was in red overlapped with the green, but only for part of the green segment, only for part of BC. So we can't really see that those are co uh, co common corresponding parts because um, they just don't match up exactly. But we can also think about common angles. So if we look, there's no sides that are common, but are there any angles? Well, we have angle B here and angle B here. And if we look on our diagram, angle B in green is the same as angle B in red. So angle B is going to be what they have in common. So knowing how to separate these triangles, label them carefully, and picking out those common parts will really help you in a proof. So let's look at an example of that. So here, I'm going to be given that angle BAC, so this angle here, is congruent to angle ABE, this angle here. All right. And I want to prove, and now this is really tricky when we have a problem like this because there's so many triangles in this picture. 
We want to really figure out which ones we're proving. So we're going to outline them. Angle A, B, E. If you have different colors, use those colors. So angle A, B, E. I want to prove that that is congruent to angle B, A, C. Like that. All right, so first, you might already kind of see what's going on here now that I've outlined it in colors, but let's separate those two triangles and then dive into our proof. So separating the two triangles, I have angle A, B, E. Now we have to also mark the pieces we're given. We know that angle A was a right angle. It was in that diagram. And that this angle here, A, B, E, was one of our congruent angles. So I want to mark it. All right, I also have angle B, A, C. And again, B has a right angle, so we want to mark that. And then B, A, C was that other congruent angle. So separating these two triangles really helps see what's going on. All right, so let's write our given information, and then we'll put our thinking caps on and figure out the rest of our proof. So angle B, A, C is congruent to angle A, B, E, um, and that is given. All right, so let's see, what else do we know? Well, we want to prove these two triangles are congruent, so we're going to need to use one of our five congruent triangle congruence theorems. Um, little review from our triangle congruence theorems. We'll just put it on the side here. Triangle congruence theorems. We have side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and the one we learned in the last lesson, HL, hypotenuse leg. All right, so we have tons of stuff to choose from, um, but all of those, we need some corresponding congruent parts. Right now, the only thing we have are these two angles. But I know that right angles are always congruent. So let's get that in there. Let's do this. So let's see, we have right angle, so angle A, and now we have to be a little bit careful because here when we separated it, it looks like just angle A. But if we look up at the original diagram, there's so many different things going on at A, we want to be really specific as to which angle we're looking at. So let's name it BAE. So angle BAE is congruent to angle ABC, ABC because all right angles are congruent. Always. That's our theorem. I don't remember the name of the theorem, but that's okay. We can just explain what the theorem says. Make sure we don't leave out anything important. All right, so now how about our third step? We have two congruent angles. If we look at our options, we have angle, angle, side, and we have HL. Ooh, because I have right angles. Okay, so we always want to keep that HL in there. Uh, two angles, I also have angle, side, angle. So right now, I'm kind of focusing on these three theorems here because I already have two congruent pairs of angles and I have a right triangle. All right, so let's see what else do we know about these two triangles? Well, they were overlapping, so we want to think about common parts. Which part did they have in common? Look back at our color coding. Our red and our green triangles, there was an overlapping part, and it was the side AB. Side AB overlapped. If we look at the separated triangles, we can see AB and AB are the same. So here, I want to put that into here, into my proof. AB is congruent to AB by the reflexive property of congruence. Reflexive prop of congruence. Getting a little smushed here with my, with my diagrams, but that's okay. All right, and then lastly, I think we're done. We have enough to use angle side angle. So I know that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle BAC by angle side angle congruence theorem. All right, and that concludes our lesson on overlapping triangle congruence. So thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.